All right, I did a video about uh, capacitor leakage using a, um, a, a application note here by Keithley uh, using an electrometer. And what is an electrometer? Is electrometer is a device that has very, very high input impedance. Uh, this one has a one tera ohm input impedance into a, an instrument. And if you're lucky to afford one of these instruments, you can use that. Um, but what do people who like to hack, all right? Well, one of the famous hackers of the day was uh, Bob Pease. Everybody knows who Bob Pease is. If you don't know who Bob Pease is, you're missing out. You need to read his books and his app notes and stuff, uh, Robert Pease. Uh, and um, this is a great uh, article he wrote. He had a, a, a little blurb in electronic design that was a, uh, What's, what's all this about this anyhow? Um, and this one is, what's all this about capacitor leakage stuff anyhow? Uh, so Bob delves into capacitors. And so uh, you would think he had, we had, have access to all kinds of fancy test equipment and stuff, but that's not Bob's style, okay? So what he wanted to look at is long-term leakage, like over a year or over many days. And so um, what did he do? Well, he just went over to the bench and just wired something up, okay? So this is really cool. Now I will charge up some of my favorite low leakage capacitors such as Panasonic Pro polypropylene one microfarad. So nice low leakage part up to 9.021 volts, a random voltage, for one hour. Yes, he's going to hold the capacitor constant for one hour. Now, why do that if you're interested in leakage? You just charge it up and measure it. Well, there uh, are other parameters in capacitors called dielectric soakage, uh, uh, saturation, uh, a bunch of stuff. There's chemistry inside even the most basic polypropylene capacitors. You would think it's just metal and plastic and who cares about anything else, right? But no, you soak them in for an hour and, and you can see this, I, I've done it. You can see it change over, over, at least over several minutes, it's easy to see it change. He let them soak in and then he's gonna read the voltage out with his favorite High input impedance unity gain follower. You think it was one of those fancy uh, electrometer? No, it's just a it's just a part. It's an LMC six six two. It has well here. Here is the LM six six two. Okay. It's just a dual op amp. It look, it's just like a general gener, generic dual op amp. But look at this. Look at this. Low. Input bias current. That's the current that goes into the part. That's the thing that you worry about. Two femtoamps. Femtoamps. <laughs> and this part is unlike any other op amp. It's designed very, very interesting inside and uh, way above my pay grade. Um, but yeah, two femtoamps. So you would expect this to be a super, super expensive part. All right. So I went over to DigiKey and I bought 10 of them. Um, they were a buck and a half, a buck and a half. I, I can't believe it. So anyway, so you figure, yeah, I can use some of those. Uh, so LMC662, so that's what we're gonna do. Uh, so he uh, used his favorite high gain follower or uh, unity gain follower here with femtoamp input. He says it's three femtoamps. It's actually two femtoamps. Um, and, a, and buffer that into his favorite six digit DVM, an Agilent, slash HP 33401A. Well, I've got one of those, so let's do it exactly like P's. Let's, let, let's measure capacitors exactly like Bob P's and then monitor the V out for several days. Why did you choose nine volts? Ah! It's just because these parts are uh, maximum 16 volts uh, minus V rail to plus V rail. So he hooked, he hooked it up um, minus to ground and plus to plus 16 volts. And then he uh, put it sort of right in the middle somewhere, nine, nine volts, okay? And then he, he, measured, he measured the uh, voltages day after day after day. Now remember, this is just a capacitor floating in the air. It's just, the only reason it goes down is because its own leakage 
and maybe two femtoamps. But yeah, it 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 holds it holds its voltage really, really, really well. Um, and uh, so hats off to Panasonic for making one of these really, really whiz bang, whiz bang capacitors. Let's see what uh, let's see what we can put together on the bench. All right, so I've got my experiment going on in here. Uh, I wanted to keep it out of air motion and stuff like that, so I put it in a box. Uh, might be better to have even shielded, but I just put it in a box. And I'm hooking it up to my HP three four four zero one DVM. All right, and right now it's measuring about four. 4.7.84 uh, volts. Okay, 7.84 volts. That's what it is this morning. Uh, if you want to take a look, I ran this for three days. Uh, let's see here. Where are my numbers? You can barely read them here. Let me change the uh, exposure of the camera so you can oops, so you can see them. So I started out at 4.75468. After 12 hours, it was down to that. Uh, after one day, it was 7.500, and this morning it was 7.485. So my capacitor is doing pretty good too. It's not losing, losing too much. Let's take a look at the circuit. All right, here it is in the box. Let me take it out of the box. All right, here we go. Let me go ahead and uh, get rid of stuff here. We don't need things attached to it. I just want to show you the construction. Uh, so the capacitor that I was testing is this very nice one here that I stole out of some piece of equipment that I uh, threw in the trash can. This is an electrocube part. It's 0.68 microfarads, 200 volt. That's quite kind of big, but it's a very, very expensive thin film cap. Should have been really, really good for this type of thing. All right. And this is my uh, 662 uh, femto amp input op amp. Now I want to talk a little bit about leakage and doing doing tests like this. And in fact, it's in the data sheet. So let's let's take a look at the data sheet again. So a lot of times you worry about leakage on the on the PC board, and you'll put a guard ring around it. Okay. And so if there's any leakage through the uh, solder mask or the the, the FR4 or whatever. You, you guard it with a with a ring of, of 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 conductivity around it, and then you tie that to a special point. So here they've tied that uh, insulated or the uh, shield ring, the guard ring. They've they've tied that to ground. Other times you'll 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 drive it. So here they've tied the guard ring to the output of the uh, of the device. It's being guarded so that it's at equal potentials to what you're measuring and stuff. So there's different ways of doing that. And it talks about the best way to do it, which is the way that I'm doing it, and that is air wiring. So here is a um, op amp, and you bend one of the pins up. You don't solder it down. You bend it up, and then you right. I don't have in my circuit. I don't have the resistor. I just have a, a, a capacitor here, and the capacitor goes to ground. So the everything is floating in the air. So the really the only place you're interested in is this one wire here from the capacitor into the op amp and there's nothing out touching it except air and that's the lowest leakage probably put it in a dry dry nitrogen atmosphere or something would be even better but um, yeah this is air wiring okay and that's what I have here let me see if I can even zoom down farther I don't see if you can see it there but pin 3 is bent out okay so let me get some something to point with would be better. So here's my capa uh, capacitor. This is the capacitor. Here's my op amp on a socket. Pins one, two are in the socket. Pin three is bent out and then it ties to the capacitor. The capacitor goes to a ground pin over here. And then I have this other floating device here. This is a resistor over here. I've taken the voltage rails to the op amps. I'm, I'm running it at 15 volts and I have a 10K, 10K to divide it down to seven and a half. And so I have a seven and a half on this wire right here. So here's my thing under test. I'm going to reach down and I'm going to touch that, touch that capacitor. And I, I just kind of looped it under so it was touching it. And I left it there for an hour. And then I went over and I reached and I, bling, and, I and I removed this uh, potential 
and now the only thing is the capacitor holding that voltage. And then I measured it over three days to see how much uh, leakage this capacitor had. So that's, that's a great way to measure leakage. All right, there we go. How to measure a capacitor like Bob Pease. I remember Bob. Bob used to come to the um, electronic flea markets here in Silicon Valley. He driving his Volkswagen bus, uh, a Beetle. He had, he had this, this old Beetle. It seems like it was like a brown Beetle. If I remember the color, I don't quite remember if it was a blue, a blue or a brown. No, I don't, I can't remember my mind. I remember him. He always had his big beard and, he, and a big grin on his face. He was always standing there next to his, his VW bug and he had the back seat all full of books. <laughs> so you could go over to him and buy his books. <laughs> he was great. Anyway, uh, yeah, Bobby. He has another article on measuring uh, uh, dielectric saturation and stuff too in capacitors, but that's a bit fancy. Anyway, yeah, we'll have Bob.